Hi guys, hope you enjoy this video. Uh, just before you hear me waffling, click on the Patreon link because I have added a new Patreon video which is all about lip and tongue biting. Enjoy guys and enjoy this video. With their twitches during the night because a lot of people say that they're either trying to get to sleep and their twitching is waking them up or not waking them up but stopping them from going to sleep um, or sometimes they do wake, wake up and they find that their twitches are particularly stressful and they can't get back to sleep again now I do remember particularly um, certainly within the first year of my uh, BFS uh, and now we're eight years <laughs> eight years in um, that for me it's all about developing coping mechanisms. I think that's the fair assumption that most people would go, you know, I'm just thinking, because it's not coping techniques, and I'm just thinking to myself here. Um, but I think obviously in the early days, if your anxiety is extremely high, and you're very worried about what's going on, then night time can be a really horrible time because obviously when you're lying in bed, uh, you know, and you're trying to get to sleep, it's probably the most active time in terms of your brain being hypersensitive and noticing absolutely everything that is going on in your body. During the day, it's different because we're either working or we're doing different things that keep our minds distracted and also we tend to not think about uh, our symptoms or generally stuff that goes on a lot more. So when we are lying in bed it's very very difficult because we generally are thinking about what's happening in the day or we're just trying to clear our minds and calm down. So the worst thing that can happen is we get a jolt or a, you know, a thumping twitch in the pectoral or the leg. Um, and yes, of course, they can be very, very disconcerting. Now, again, as I said, there's no real easy answer to this uh, with regards to um, how to deal with it. Now, I did do a video called BFS, how do you sleep at night? So I'm going to kind of take a little bit from that. But also, if you can adapt and learn to deal with your twitching and not get so stressed out with your twitching in the evening, then you're a lot more better prepared to deal with what happens during the day. And I think that that's crucially important. So first tip um, is really really try and reduce your caffeine intake because that's going to play a massive factor as you know i drink a lot of coffee and last week uh, as you may have heard in one of my videos i was going to bed at 10 30 11 and i was filled to the brim with coffee really super stressed um, about life and work and financial stuff and my body was like, I was lying in bed and I was really jerking all over the place. And I was thinking to myself, thank goodness that I know that this is all benign. Um, but also, it was a great, further great learning experience for me because I know that anxiety, stress, uh, prolonged periods of stress, uh, caffeine are all massive factors in increasing the twitching that your body experiences now uh, you know I've spoken to quite a few people this week um, who are all very stressed and we're all suffering from a great deal of stress so when it comes to kind of sleeping at night I think one of the best things you can do um, is so for me sometimes watching you know, and this kind of goes against the rule book of what is the best way to sleep because obviously most people um, are completely uh, uh, they need to have complete darkness um, they have to be in the pitch black and 
uh, you know, complete silence and all the rest of it. I'm not one of those people. I actually like falling asleep with something going on in the background, uh, whether it's a documentary or something that I like, you know, spooky stuff or whatever. Um, I'm not particularly bothered about the um, amount of light in the room. Obviously, I don't sleep with the light on, but um, I actually prefer to have some light in the room. I find it more difficult to sleep with the light completely off. Um, it does, doesn't does work so well for me. That being said, I did have one night where I did leave my laptop at work, turned everything off, and slept without any distractions, and it was the best night's sleep I ever had. But, um, going against the rule book, when you're in a place where you need a lot of distraction, because ultimately... Um, dealing with BFS at night is the same as be dealing with BFS during the day. It's overcoming that stress and anxiety of the symptoms and the underlying fear that you may have something worse. Now, as I've said to people in the past, it's about building mental fortitude. Now, when I say that, I mean building up a strong mental defensive wall. Um, so, essentially, what we need to get to the... Um, root of is that our twitching is benign that is part of the uh, process of healing now often the fear that there is something underlying and it's worse can take a catastrophic grip on people now and i understand that because i have been there myself so what i would say is tip number one is going against the rule book if it does work for you have a documentary on you know have something on that you can watch and you can kind of drift off to sleep to because really what the aim of the game is is to distract yourself so you're not focusing on your twitching and you're not lying there just going and waiting to fall asleep Oh, there's a twitch. Oh, there's another twitch. You know, if you're watching something that you're enjoying, but you're sleepy, I would much rather take an extra half an hour, extra hour to go to sleep, but not be so preoccupied with what's going on, um, which could ultimately result in worse sleep um, any day of the week. But again, it is what works best for you. Now, I think... That is one of the things that definitely, retrospectively, I would have done. It's one of the things I do now, um, although it's just something I like doing. I mean, the twitching doesn't bother me so much. I've had tons of twitching today. I've been to the gym. My calf muscles are really popping off left, right and centre. Got some great uh, little snippets of those as well, uh, if you want to catch them at the end. Uh, and a lot of sensory symptoms, so I can kind of feel a lot of buzzing in my calves and uh, all those areas, and that's something that I'm just used to now. Um, anyway, so that is the first tip I would say is really handy to have a little source of distraction. You may find that reading a book may be a better option. I'm not a big reader, so it doesn't really work for me very well, but you may find that that is something that is better and um, more peaceful than watching a rowdy film or a documentary. Um, of course, I wouldn't have the volume blaring at full capacity either. Um, so the second tip I would say that I think is vitally important is to um, eliminate caffeine. Certainly don't drink any more caffeine after 2 o'clock because I think caffeine stays in the body for about 7 or 8 hours. It's really, um, you know, it does accumulate over the course of the day and I find myself so wired and so stressed uh, through caffeine anxiety that uh, I'm pretty jittery by the end of the day, but I do love coffee too much, so I'm happy to trade the twitching, extra twitching in for my love of coffee. But I would say that you're far better off going for um, preferably not even decaffeinated coffee, just try to go for something a little bit more holistic, um, I'm plant-based, so I don't drink uh, anything dairy, but perhaps like, um, I don't know, uh, some caffeine 
free drinks, warm drinks, if they work for you, something that is a little bit warming and a little bit more um, comfortable, comforting. Um, so that's a good that's a good one. But caffeine's definitely going to um, help. Now I think also we can often ponder a lot at night. So have we dealt with all of our issues for the day? Because sometimes we lay in bed and we're reminiscing about all of our issues and that kind of exasperates our stress level. So I think it's really important to get any issues or anything, you know, anything that you're particularly concerned about either written down and you know that if you haven't done them today, you've written it down and you're ready to tackle it tomorrow. I think that's vitally important. Um, needless to say, obviously my most important things are do not Google your symptoms and do not participate in any BFS, ALS forums or anything along those lines. Um, everybody I speak to, everybody indulges in these very negative behaviours. And what you're doing is, I compare it to being on a hamster wheel because when you're uh, suffering BFS and you're worried about other neurological diseases and you're googling all this stuff you're just you're just plugging back into the matrix and fueling this treadmill this little um, hamster wheel so you keep running and you're trying to keep at pace with it but you're just going at full speed and your brain is absolutely wired you need to try and disconnect as many sockets as you can that are outlets of information and outlets of potential sources of anxiety because you want to go to bed with a very clear mind and that is essentially the root of what you're getting at. Um, cutting out all those negative behaviours is crucial to um, your recovery. I can't, I can't say how important it is to recognise as well the mental element of this because the vast majority of people that I do speak with and uh, I do talk to, um, ha all, uh, and almost everybody that suffers BFS, uh, myself included, particularly obviously at the beginning, um, don't recognise their mental symptoms, their mental health, and how their health anxiety um, and general anxiety is fueling this BFS. Now, most people, everybody I know has had a history of health anxiety and had a stress and trauma and I do believe this is the body's way of reacting. At some point the engine just gets flooded, it can't take any more of the relentless stress that we're putting on our body and what happens um, on the inside is often manifested on the outside. So you know if your skin starts to flare up you know that it's stress i know it's stress for me when i'm stressed my twitching um increases i know that that's uh, that's goes hand in hand so those are some really important facts and figures so to speak in order to help you get a good night's sleep um it's not easy and it takes some practice but ultimately what is the most important thing is to distract yourself and keep going every single day. Keep distracting yourself, keep focusing on avoiding those negative damaging behaviors that will fuel those avenues of anxiety for you. You really don't want them, you don't need them. You have a life to lead and you are fit, strong and healthy and that's incredibly important. Guys, I hope that really helped today. Um, uh, I will just tag on some uh, clips of some of my twitching today, which uh, went to the gym, just general twitching after eight years. Uh, it's just how it is, just how it rocks and rolls. Um, okay, guys, have a great evening. Catch you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.